If crack is turning somebody into a skin and bones, out of their mind, sweating person, mm -hmm. what do you think the word of Christ is gonna do to you when it's in you richly, dwelling in you richly? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you what it does to you. You're gonna be full of integrity. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be full of love. You're gonna be full of patience, full of grace, full of self-control, full of forgiveness, mm -hmm. full of mercy, mm -hmm. all the fruits of the spirit. Mm -hmm. There's not gonna be anything in you that's immoral. Mm -hmm. Cause this is dictating your life and dwelling in you richly. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. So we're not we're not um just like anybody else in the world can be tempted, we could be tempted by the devil too. Mm -hmm. We're not, you know. Immune uh, from it. We're not, yeah, we're not immune from temptation. Right. Everybody's going to be tempted. When Jesus was on this earth, he was tempted heavily. Yeah. So we're all going to be tempted. But when it comes down to being tempted, and you got this word dwelling in you richly, you're going to do like Jesus did. We don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out the mouth of God. You're going to start using the word of God to fight the devil. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because, you know, this war that we're in, it's a spiritual war. Mm -hmm. we're, you know, it's not a physical, it's a spiritual war. Yeah. That, you know, demons, principalities, any type of demon that you could think of, it's a, it's a spiritual war. That's what it is. And you need the word of God to combat that. That's what, that's what you need. And that's another benefit to having the word of Christ dwelling in you richly. Because you're going to start using the word to fight your battles. Mm -hmm. You know, people, they go to the alcohol bottle. You know, people who go yeah. through it. You ever heard of some of, uh, some of these teachers and people, they're like, I can't wait to go home and get a bottle of wine, mm -hmm. a glass of wine. You know what I mean? People who are really stressed, they go to alcohol. Yeah. Because that alcohol, it, 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 it you know, kind of pushes the stress away. You know, I, mean, I don't know. I never had alcohol, but I'm, I'm assuming that it, you know, kind of alleviates the, the pressure and the pain. You know, people, you know, they when they go through something, they get a divorce, they lost their money, they got fired, somebody died. They go to alcohol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alcohol numbs the pain from what I've heard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alcohol takes away that pain. But here it is temporarily. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do it forever. Yeah. Amen. It's a temporary fix. Mm -hmm. Alcohol is a temporary fix. Drugs is a temporary fix. Sex is a temporary fix. Anything on this earth is a temporary fix. It's Amen. not permanent. Mm -hmm. It's not permanent. Mm -hmm. That's why if you have a headache and you got to take Advil, it only takes care of that one headache. Yeah. It's not going to take care of all headaches forever. Mm -hmm. Right? Amen. If you sore, you need to, you know, get ibuprofen or a leave. It's only going to take care of it for 12 hours. Mm -hmm. If you got allergies and you need Claritin, it's only going to take care of that sneezing <laughs> for 12 hours. Okay? <laughs> it, it's temporary fixes on this earth. Amen. Temporary. Amen. But Jesus is a forever fix. Come on. Amen. He's a forever fix. Yeah. Whatever's going on in your heart, mm -hmm. your mind, or your body it's a forever fix. He can fix you mm -hmm. forever. Amen. So if you feel like my body's broken, my mind is not right, my heart is evil, whatever you, whatever it is, Jesus can fix that permanently. Amen. He can change your heart. He can renew your mind. He can heal your body permanently. Amen. You don't got to take another dose of Jesus to get healed again. Mm -hmm. You have a permanent Healing, renewed, healed mind and heart Amen. and body. Amen. So that's that's you see the difference between earthly fixes, they're temporary. Mm -hmm. There's temp. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, he fixes you forever. Amen. But the thing is you gotta stay with Jesus. You gotta follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. You gotta be committed to Jesus, and you gotta be committed to this word. 
Because that's how you build that relationship up. Mm -hmm. you, you can't just say, oh yeah, I'm committed to you, but I never spend any time with you. Mm -hmm. No. I can say without any hesitation, me and Naomi have gotten closer since she's come over to our house more often. And that's because we spend more time together. The love is still there. The love, you know, I'm never going to stop loving her. But that relationship has changed. Mm -hmm. It's changed when somebody's on your couch. Mm -hmm. Day after day. <laughs> it's changed when they're eating your food. When you're watching <laughs> TV with them. That relationship changes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I say that relationship is stronger. It's just like with God. God's never going to stop loving you. Yeah. He, mm -hmm. never, he, he loves the crackheads. Yeah. He loves the prostitutes. Yeah. He loves the gangbangers. And he loves his children. But it's something different when you have a relationship with him. Amen. That relationship is, hits differently. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm serious. When you, that means you could go to God, say, God, you know what? I need to intercede for my wife. I need to pray for my mother. I want to talk to you about my sister. Can you deal with my dad? The dog needs healing. <laughs> That's that relationship. You can start coming to him with like a relationship. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yep, exactly. But Amen. he doesn't stop loving. You. Yeah. He doesn't stop loving. You, but that relationship is different. Yeah. Jesus said, not everybody who comes to me and says, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Because mm -hmm. he'll say, depart from me. I knew you not. Mm-hmm. Jesus wants a relationship with you, mm -hmm. okay? He wants a relationship with each and every one of you. He wants fellowship with you. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to be in this word. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. like him talking to you. Yeah. I That's know. why you need prayer every day. Yeah. That's you talking to God and him talking back to you. Mm -hmm. Praise and worship. You praising your savior. You, you praising and worshiping your creator. Mm -hmm. That's why that's so important. Spending time with God. Mm -hmm. That's why that's so important. Going to church. That's why that's so important. Mm -hmm. You're in my house. You're showing that you love me. God already knows everything. Mm -hmm. But you want to know something God doesn't have? That experience. Unless you give him that, you don't know. He don't know how that, what it means to, for you to obey him. He, you know, unless you give that to him, mm. he's all knowing. But until you give him that experience, Lord, here I am. I'm all yours. God, I know it's 3 a.m. and I'm tired, but I'm going to go and seek you. I'm going to fast for two days. Until you actually do that, God don't know how that feels like until somebody does it. Mm. And that's where a relationship comes in. So we have to... Make sure we're getting into this word. Let it dwell in us richly. Because that's the first step of getting a relationship with God. And that's how you combat the devil. Mm -hmm. And that's how you dictate your actions, your thoughts, your feelings, everything. Mm -hmm. It's the word of God. Praise and worship, it has its place. Fasting, it has its place. Prayer, it has its place. But things change when you get in this word, yeah. and this word gets in you. Amen. Yeah. Okay? So, yeah. that's Colossians 3.16. Then 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and in righteousness. Those people, who we've heard them, they say... Uh, the Bible was written by man. Okay, God didn't come down here with a pen and paper and write the Bible, literally. Mm -hmm. But if you read the Bible, it says it's by inspiration by God. Mm -hmm. Through his Holy Spirit. Or in personal encounters, people in the Old Testament and New Testament have had with God. And they wrote the book. But it's by inspiration of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So if you ever hear somebody again say... Uh, I don't play the Bible, no mind. It was written by man. Tell them, okay, man literally physically wrote the book, but it was by inspiration of God through his Holy Spirit and personal encounters they had with him. Mm -hmm. um, it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction and in righteousness. That's another reason we need to be heavily invested in the word, and the word needs to be heavily invested in us 
dwelling in us because this Bible, this word is going to tell us how to live and how to act mm -hmm. and how to fight mm -hmm. what our future is going to be. That's why when you, when I watch the news, I'm not worried about the news. This is just getting closer and closer to the day Jesus comes back for his church. Yeah. That's all that is. It just, it confirms it literally every day. Yeah. With COVID, earthquakes, earthquakes, sicknesses, wars, rumors of wars. All this is just confirming what this book already said. Yeah. So I don't have, I'm not getting all, you know, flustered when they said, oh, 7.2 earthquake. I'm, I'm sad for the people. You know what I mean? Or when I hear wars, uh, rumors of war, I'm not getting, I'm not getting, you know, nervous. Mm -hmm. it, it says this in the Bible. That's yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. If anything, I'm going to start praising. Amen. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. um, but this, this tells us how to act, yeah. how we should treat each other, how we should treat our enemies. It says, love your enemy and pray for your enemy. Mm -hmm. What other book is doing that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what other book is telling you to love your enemy? Mm -hmm. Somebody who did you wrong. Yeah, and they meant to do it. And they meant to do it. <laughs> Just the Bible, God's mm -hmm. word, inspired by God. So mm -hmm. this is why we need to have this word dwelling in us richly, mm -hmm. okay? And verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. And I wanted to go back to his, um, his profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and in righteousness. That's another reason why it's important to go to church, okay? I can read this Bible all day long by myself, but God has put in his church offices, and I'm talking about preachers, pastors, bishops, apostles, evangelists. He has put in his church people who are solely focused on teaching this word. And they have insight I don't have. Mm -hmm. That's why we need to be in church. Because you can read this on your own. You can watch shakes on your own. You can pray, you can have a praise and worship service all on your own. You can listen to it in the car on your own. But you need to go where the word is being taught. Find a good pastor, find a good church, and be consistent in going each and every day. Mm -hmm. Because it's not something, oh, I'll go just to make them happy. No. This is for your own benefit, mm -hmm. yeah. for instruction, for reproof, for your own profit. This is for you. Yeah. Okay. And there's some things we can. We can I'm not saying you can't have a legitimate service, you know, or study like we're doing at home, but you need to be in church. Mm -hmm. There's a reason God said that. Mm -hmm. Don't forsake the assembly of the saints. Get together. Mm -hmm. Get you know, get together with one another. You're stronger together. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not saying don't watch a you know a sermon at home or don't praise at home, don't pray at home, don't study at home. No, that's good. But don't forget what he said to do. Yeah. <clears throat> Obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. That means don't go do. 10 other things when you're not doing the one thing God told you to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Good. It's like, oh God, I, you know, I gave to the children. You know <laughs> what I mean? I fed the homeless. You know what I mean? I prayed for two hours at home, but did you go to church? Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Did you go to church? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm. And you're not doing this to check something off, to make somebody feel better. This is for your own Benefit. Yeah. This is for my benefit. Yeah. That's why there's no, you know, I like I said, I told you, I used to think, man, why, why, you know, well, in Ohio, why do we go to church so much? Literally, <laughs> there's no reason to be at church this amount of time. But then my, the more I went to church, my mind started to change because I was getting more of this word. So it, it, like I said, once you get more of this word, your mind starts to change. Mm -hmm. Your mind starts to get renewed. Then I started to realize I need as much of this as possible, yeah. literally. Like, I remember in college when I had an exam coming up, finals, now I'm sure you can attest to this. I was like, I, I literally counted that. I was like, I got 34 hours to prepare for this test. I needed every single one of those hours to pass that test. You know what I mean? I was like, there was times, I was like, you know what? I'm going to skip this class 
it's to study. So, to study. Because you, you're like, I need as much as yeah. I can to prepare for this test. Yeah. And don't you know life is a test? Yeah. Life is mm. a test. Your enemy is seeking after you. Yeah. The devil. He is. He's trying to get you. My Lord. But this is your weapon. Mm. This is your weapon. The church is your weapon. Prayer is your weapon. We have spiritual weapons for a spiritual war mm. and spiritual enemies. The devil, uh, demons, you know, principalities, spiritual. It's all spiritual. So we need to invest in ourselves spiritually. And this is the main way to do it. Main way to do it. Get in God's word. Go to church. Have a strong prayer life. Praise and worship God. Trust God. But don't forget your spiritual weapons. If you're failing spiritually, ask yourself, am I using my weapons? Mm. If you're getting your butt whooped, ask yourself, do you got your armor on? Mm. Do you? Mm. Because I promise you, um, in all the wars that took place in, 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 the, in the world, they kept their armor on. Yeah. They kept their armor on. World War One, World War Two. All the, all the wars out there, they kept their armor on. Yeah. They didn't take off that helmet. You know what I mean? They kept that on. But make sure you are not neglecting God's word because it's for your benefit by inspiration of God that you can get at home, you can get in your car, but you better be getting in that church because mm -hmm. that's where you're going to get the most efficient word, I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. Because that's where God placed true men and women of God to teach his word. And that's where things happen in the spirit in the spirit world. That's where, you know, people have encounters with God. And like I said, you could do it at home. You can get that at home. But I feel like your best bet is different, is different when you're surrounded by other believers. Let's go back to Matthew 7 and 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man which, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and, the, and they beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. So right here, Jesus is teaching, he's speaking in all his wisdom, and he says, I will liken, I will compare the person who listens to my words and actually does them to a wise man. Hmm. I want Jesus to say I'm wise. Amen. But he didn't stop there. He compared it to a house, to the person who built that house on the rock. Mm -hmm. So when, when the floods came, when the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew, and the beat upon that house. You want to know what words you don't see in there? If. If. Thank you, Naomi. <laughs> you Good don't job. see. I'm going to read that again. And I'm going to put if in it. If the rain descended. Mm. If the floods came. Mm. If the winds blew. And if they beat upon that house. And if it fell. Mm -hmm. No. There's no if. It's saying the rain is going to come. My Lord. The winds are going to come. Mm -hmm. The storms are going to come in your life, okay? Yeah, amen. Bad things are going to happen sometimes, okay? On the good and the bad. The rain falls on the just and the unjust, mm -hmm. okay? We're not exempt from it. Yeah. But Jesus said, if you built your life, your house, your family upon his word... Your house ain't going to fall. Mm. Your life ain't going to fall apart. My Lord. So that means if you lose your job, you lose your family, you lose an arm, you lose an eye, <laughs> whatever, you lose your dog, you lose whatever is precious to you on this earth, it's not going to break you. Yeah. It's not going to break you. Amen. Your house isn't going to fall. Yeah. Because you built your life on his word. You listen to his teachings. Amen. Like I said, that's not to say bad things aren't going to happen. You know? That's, that's not to say bad things are going to happen. That's not, that doesn't mean you're exempt from getting fired. 
you exempt from a family member going off track. You exempt from whatever. No. But if that does happen, it, it, it says, there's no if in here. It says when that stuff does happen, you're secure because you built your house on his word and you followed his word. Mm -hmm. Now let's read the, the last two verses in there. And everyone that hears these sayings of mine and does them not shall be likened unto a foolish man. How many foolish people do you know? Which built his house upon the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell and great was the fall of it. So right there again, even with the foolish man, the rain came, the wind came, the storms came, but because they didn't build their house off the word of Christ, they didn't follow the teachings of Jesus, their house fell apart. Mm -hmm. Their life fell apart. Fell apart. Some people, you know, they lose their mind. Mm -hmm. Their mind fell apart. Mm -hmm. Some people, they got a broken heart. They never recover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Their heart fell apart. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't build their life on them. The strongest foundation there is, and that's Jesus. Amen. And they're considered a foolish man because you had the word of Christ right there at your disposal and you just neglected it. And not only are you a foolish man, but your house fell apart. And great was his fall. Mm. Great was his fall. That means it was significant. Lord. That means something like you, you really went through it. That's why you see some of those, those like millionaires and billionaires, you know, something goes wrong. They commit suicide. Yeah. They're on the streets. Something went drastically wrong and great was their fall. Something went wrong and they're compared to a foolish man. Um, In terms of the word, um, that's all I had on that. That's a lot. Amen. <laughs> I wanted to, um, you don't have to turn to us, but in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, lay, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust does corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for your for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth, rust does corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now, I want to preface this by saying, Jesus doesn't want you poor. God doesn't want you eating out of trash cans, going from shelter to shelter, and don't got a dime to your name. That's not what this verse is saying, okay? But what it means by treasures, Listen, we understand we, we need money in this world, okay? That's how you get food. That's how you pay the bills. That's how you get clothes. That's how you get a car to go places. You need money in this world, okay? Mm -hmm. We're not disputing that. But it's when you start loving money. Mm -hmm. Then whatever you love, that's your treasure. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. That means you're like, okay, this is at the top of my heart. So we got to make sure... We utilize money and we don't let money utilize us. Mm -hmm. Okay? We understand we need money. We, you know, you need a house over your head. You need to provide for your family. You have kids. You got to provide for your kids. You know what I mean? The Bible says a man who don't take care of his family is worse than a darn infidel. My goodness. Okay, so I think that's telling me I need some money, right? Mm -hmm. So, obviously, we need money. We need a job. We need to work. We need to do things. We're living in the world. But don't start to get a love for it. Don't start to put it above God. Mm -hmm. Don't put it on the same level of God because that's when things start to get dicey for you. Mm -hmm. And whatever you love, right here, verse 21, for where your treasure is, that's where your heart is also. So whatever your heart is connected to, that's where your treasure is. Mm -hmm. So some people, their heart is connected to their house. Mm -hmm. It's connected to their cars. It's, con it's connected to how they look. You know, mm -hmm. vain, very vain people. It's connected to uh, the people around them, the fame, everything.
But when it's all said and done, you can't take that with you. Yeah. That's not profitable spiritually. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So what does it mean by lay up treasures for yourself in heaven? That's salvation. Mm -hmm. That's teaching the word of God. That's getting people saved. Yeah. Because that's how you start to occur gifts in heaven. Yeah. Like I said, we on this earth for 60, 70, 80, 90, 110, 120 years, maybe. Okay? You know how long some people been dead for? Some people have died 1901. That's more than 100 years right now. 1801, 200 years. 1701, 300 years. 1601, 400 years. 1501, 500 years. And we know this earth has been around for a long time and people have been around for a long time. So I'm telling you, they already eclipsed how long they've been on this earth. Yeah. So what if you was to ask them right now, what do you think is more important? Your time on earth or where you at right now? I bet you they're going to say where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. Earth don't mean nothing to me right now. Yeah. Because I was there for a little time yeah. and I'm already here for a long time. Yeah. Right. And I still got an eternity more to go. Mm. So you want to build up for yourself treasures in heaven. Yeah. Okay. The first treasure, Nation did a video on this today actually. The first Trevor treasure is getting to heaven, mm. which yeah. is salvation, which is spending eternity in the presence of God. Not going to hell, basically. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's the first treasure. Then the second treasure is like, you get a, uh, a crown. You yeah. get a mansion in heaven. Mm -hmm. You get all a healed body. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? If you were saved and you lost a leg and an arm, you got you know you got your leg and your arm back in heaven? Amen. You have a body <laughs> in heaven. Okay? Yeah. There's no aches and pains in yeah. Advil to leave. Yeah. There's no surgeries. No Thanks. Is great. Yeah. <laughs> There's no cysts. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have a perfect body. Yeah. You know, people have stepped into heaven a hundred years old, old, gray, yeah. wrinkled. But once they step into heaven, it's like they straighten up. They yes. get strong and they look like they were in the prime of their lives. Right. Because there's no death in heaven. You know your body's dying every day? Yeah. It's perishing every day. But your spirit gets renewed each and every day. Mm. Your spirit doesn't die. Amen. Now, there's a second death called hell. If you go to hell, I mean, you you don't die, but that's called the second death. Because you, you die spiritually, basically. Yeah. But you're still alive, su uh, suffering. My point is, we understand we have to live on this earth. We got to provide for our family. You know what I mean? We got to eat. There's things we like to do. You know what I mean? But don't let that get attached to your heart. Mm -hmm. Don't let that start to influence you. Because we're only here for a little bit of time. It's up there you want to be focused on. Mm -hmm. You want to have your focus on eternity. Okay? I, I consider myself a really logical dude. <laughs> I really do. So, you know, to me, I sit down and say, okay, 80 80 to 120 years or eternity. I know in my mind, eternity is really long. I'm going to go with eternity. That's why I'm starting to focus on eternity. I'm, you know, I got a wife. I'm going to take care of my wife. I'm going to take care of my kids and I'm going to make sure I ain't stinking and starving and don't got no house and nothing like that to my name. I'm going to take care of my business. But my heart and my focus is for eternity. So, some of the things you can do to store up gifts in heaven, like I said, first, salvation is the, the biggest gift at all. So repent of your sins. Confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, as the Son of God. Become born again. Now, you can't do this without the help of God. So don't think you're just going to do this on your own. You need God. Um, and you start to change your life. And it starts to align with the word of God. Get this God, get this word in you. Let it dwell in you richly, like Colossians 3.16 said. Okay? So salvation. Then you start to focus on getting people saved and doing what you can for the kingdom of God. If you can't go out and get nobody saved, go pray for them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Do whatever you can for the kingdom of God. Amen. 
okay? That's how you start to occur and gain gifts and treasures in heaven. Yes. Give your whole heart to God. Thank you, Lord. Give your whole heart to God. That's what God wants, your heart. Yeah. Give your whole heart to God. So don't get stuck on earthly things. You know what I mean? You know, I, I would like to have a nice house down here. But the main thing is I have a house. Mm -hmm. I'm not poor. I'm not homeless. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to eat uh, seafood, lobster, steak. But as long as I'm eating, you know, I'm not starving, I'm good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's basic things we should be doing on earth. But don't let your heart get attached to that. Don't let your treasures be down here. Yeah. The Egyptians, they put all their stuff in their tombs. Mm -hmm. they, they, they ain't enjoying none of that. Mm -mm. You, have, you heard of uh, the Tomb Raiders? Mm -hmm. People who go and they stealing out those tombs today. Yeah, yeah they ain't take that with them in the afterlife. Mm -hmm. You know, it, like that's what the Bible say. With thieves steal, with moths corrupt. Yeah, those are earthly treasures. You can't bring that with you, and somebody's gonna take it anyway. They're gonna rob your grave. Mm -hmm. Build up heavenly treasures where nobody could take that from you. Mm -hmm. Nature said earlier in her video. No one can take heaven from you. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. The best gift of all, no one can take that from you. No one. So, just want to say, attach your heart to spiritual things. Open your spiritual eyes. Because that's what's most important. At least in my eyes. Amen. Amen. Amen.